Welcome to my second episode of End of Life Journey with Hospice. In my last episode, I presented an introduction to hospice philosophy and overview of hospice services. Today, I would like to go into in-depth on my philosophy of a true hospice care and provide a complete understanding of a healthy closure to end of life experience for the dying patients and their families. The environment of the dying person is very important for this healthy closure to be achieved. As I mentioned in the previous episode, the terminally ill patients could be residing in many facilities or in their own homes. Considering the end of life cycle for these individuals, reverting back to their childhood or infant state of mind, needing comfort, belonging, loving care, protection, and safety. It is a very difficult experience and the most cruel punishment for the terminally ill individuals to be placed in hospitals, senior nursing facilities, board and care, or assisted living facilities, where they lie there under strange ceilings among strangers, most of the time with language barriers, feeling lonely, insecure, and at times neglected. Subsequently, most often, they are labeled as confused, combative, and aggressive due to feeling neglect and anger and unable to trust or relate to people around them. In most cases, they are not fed, comforted, nor nurtured as needed. The individual has a sense of loss of identity and belonging, and as a result becomes withdrawn, exhibits signs of depression, loss of appetite, and quality of life in the last few weeks of months of their life. They cannot express their feelings nor communicate their fears as they experience the changes with end of life cycle, thus ending their life very lonely without having the healthy closure, which is very important and needed by every individual human being and their loved ones. On the other hand, when terminally ill patients are residing in their own homes and or their relatives environment, being surrounded by familiar faces of their family and loved ones, they feel a sense of comfort, belonging, and protection, receiving all the loving care they need. The individual human being is able to thrive with the quality of life provided and also is able to achieve a very healthy closure with the experiences of end of life cycle. With many of my exposures in witnessing the end of life experiences in patients, it has led me to develop my own unique philosophy and understanding of the end of human life cycle. In the beginning, as infants are born from the spiritual world into this world, they also feel confused in a new environment with strange faces until gradually these faces and the environment become familiar to them. We welcome an infant born providing loving care, protection, and we guide the infant through the growth cycle as they build their individual life cycle. Similarly, at the end of the life cycle, when an individual human being is ready to return to the spiritual world, the spiritual world come to prepare the individual to transition back to the spiritual world. With this transitional experiences, we become the confused person, being unable to explain certain changes that occur with this individual during the end of life cycle experiences that the individual is going through. Sometimes, we explain this by saying that the patient is confused, hallucinating, and unable to communicate. In actual fact, we are the ones who get confused and unable to understand these changes 
presented by end of life cycle. I would like to detail these further. The terminally ill patient in the last month of this end of life cycle starts getting visitations from the spiritual world, most times from loved ones who have passed away, usually people who had been very close to heart with the patient. These spirits are very real to the patient, and that is one of the reasons why the patient starts to mention their presence by giving or calling out their names, reaching out their hands to where they see these spirits, thinking that they're there. Meanwhile, family members become very concerned about the patient saying that they are confused or hallucinating. It is very crucial to understand these changes with the patient to be able to provide needed care and maintain healthy relationships between the patient and family members. In my next episode, I would like to present some examples of situations of patients with different terminal diagnoses and the understanding of the necessary coping skills needed to be utilized by the family members to achieve the healthy closure for the patient with end-of-life experience. I spend a whole day with the patient and the granddaughter conversing with the grandmother and asking her how she was spending her day. And as she was sitting silently, staring at me and staring at the end of the table, where we sat, when I questioned her what she saw and what is it she was seeing at the end of the table, she started remarking, saying, there's a beautiful meadow with colorful flowers and beautiful kids playing in those flowers as if they were angels she was a slight smile on her face and staring at the area. Then she looked at me and I said, it must be very beautiful, even though I may not see it, but I can already feel what you see. And she smiled again. It is very important for us to keep the communication with the patients at the end of life cycle experiences that they go through for them to have that support they need and to make that transition a healthy one thank you for listening stay safe and healthy